Lauren Lownin from Keene State, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about preparing short read Illumina sequencing for assembly. You've already learned um, in our class about Illumina sequencing and um, how Illumina sequence data has encoded quality scores, and you've learned about alignment scoring. We're going to apply that information to the idea of data preparation before assembly. In a genome project, once you get your raw reads from the lab, you then can inspect that data and do some quality evaluation. We'll talk later about a tool called FastQC to do that. You can then take the data and you can do some quality trimming, some quality cleanup and some trimming, and then feed it into um, an assembler. And you can look at it and you can ask like, is the assembly okay? And if the answer is no, it might be that you need to go back and question how you did the quality trimming and cleanup stage that we're talking about next. If the assembly is not good, you don't want to proceed with your analytical pipeline. So trimming refers to the removal of poor quality data and also technical or adapter sequences, which are not biological. So here's the adapter sequences on either end of an Illumina read. And we have data in the middle that's actually biological, and that's the stuff we want to keep, and this is the stuff that we want to get rid of at this stage. We also just want to eliminate poor quality data, and we want to eliminate reads that read through in some cases. So there are a lot of programs to do that. We're going to use the program Trimomatic. So Trimomatic has, um, there's a lot to Trimomatic. It's a pretty complex program in some ways. It runs in two modes. One is called Simple and one is called palindrome. And the simple mode will go through and scan each read from the five prime end to the three prime end, and it will look for a list of information that the user provides it. When we run Trimomatic on RON, you might not be aware of it, but the sequencing center at the Hubbard Genome Center um, at University of New, New Hampshire, I mean, um, they are like providing information on what the adapters are. So that sequence data, RON is uh, Trimomatic is calling that within the RON environment. If we were to put data on RON that was not um, from UNH, we would have to be sure before we ran Trimomatic that we knew what the user provided adapters were and we had that file placed on RON so that it could like look for that particular data in order to remove it. Um, so the user provided adapter is something you run in the command line. You can also do this on the online platform Galaxy and in other places. And you do that when you're when you're setting up um, a trimomatic run or execution. So the search for adapters is done by making local alignments and scoring them. So as you can tell, what you should remember about alignments is if you don't tell it what to look for, it's not going to get a good alignment with your sequencing data and therefore you're not going to effectively trim off the technical or adapter sequence. Palindrome mode is a mode that's been built into Trimomatic to optimize for what's called adapter read-through. So if there isn't a long enough piece of DNA between the technical sequences at the end, you'll get read-through where the sequencing will run right into the adapter sequence on the other side from where it starts, and that can be problematic in the data, and you want to have a way of removing it. And the palindrome mode um, enables that in Trimomatic. So simple mode, here we've got a read, right? And um, the read is headed in this direction. And then in this light blue area, this is like what you're holding up for comparison. So this is like what you're telling Trimomatic the adapters should look like. And so Trimomatic is taking the read information and it's holding up what it's looking for and it's marching it along and looking for areas of alignment, okay? And so anywhere that it sees that there's an alignment, it's going to chop out that data. And anywhere that is not aligned, it's going to leave it behind. And it's not because it's not a match because that's actual biological sequence data. In palindrome mode, it's designed to look for short regions of alignment between the forward and the reverse read. So it's taking the forward read and the reverse read Whereas back here, we were just looking like one read at a time, okay, busting it all out one read at a time and marching along and looking for adapter sequence. Now we're taking the two reads, the forward and the reads, the ones that go together, and Trimomatic can tell that because of the information in the Illumina file he header. And it's taking the two 
and it's and it's marching them along side by side and looking for areas where they align and anywhere that they align is an indicator of what's called read through and that that sequence data would be would be ditched at the same time that trimomatic is looking for adapter sequence or read through it's also looking for low quality data and so trimomatic you can you can optimize this parameter or you can use the defaults and i'm actually forgetting what those defaults are right in this moment but trimomatic will look through the sequence data that's um, in between the adapter sequences and it will look for averaged um, quality or fred squares scores and if if it if the quality on average falls below a set threshold it will chop out that data um, and keep the remainder. So it does some quality filtering as well. So again, it's really important that the adapters are specified and that they are correct. So by hours, I mean any sequence data that we get back from the Hubbard Genome Center. Any sequence data, however, that we download from the NCBI or other places, we wouldn't know that. We would, we would have to actually like look at that data to figure out what the adapters are. But data that we get back, at least in the present time, from Hubbard Genome Center, that, they're, um, that the information for those adapters is maintained in a file called nextera, P-E-P-E -E dot FASTA. And the nextera name is also the name of the library prep kit that was used by the lab to prepare the um, DNA for sequencing. So generally, this is information you could get from your sequencing center or from, say, the authors of the folks that posted data if you downloaded data from the NCBI. So here's an example of a read file before and after trimming. So before trimming, it looked like this, right? And after trimming, it looked like this. It's a much shorter sequence, and it, a lot of the really low quality data has been removed, as well as the adapter data. So you're gonna you you are going to where you have already run trimomatic on RON in the command line. The input for trimomatic is a forward reads file and a reverse reads file, and those can be zipped. In fact, I think they have to be zipped for this for trimomatic to work, but I'm not positive about that. But I know it does work on zipped files. And the output is four sets of data. All of the data is fastq.gz, so it out, outputs fastq data that is that is zipped. There are two forward files and two reverse files, and that's because it's taken the input forward data and it's, and it's uh, kept what is paired and parsed out what is unpaired in case you wanna handle that differently. We actually find there's, there's rarely much in the unpaired data, but you know, maybe that, that might vary by sequencing center, for example. So this, this data would be cleaned up. The trimomatic command itself is, is a little bit of a bear, so there's all kinds of possibilities for typing this in, incorrectly. So just be really careful when you do this. And this is a place where if you've done it recently and it worked, you should use the up arrow. But you're pairing this because it's so long with no hup and the ampersand so that it runs on RON while you're doing other things or even after you've logged out of RON. You invoke the command in red the blue are the options for the command that we are specifying. So we're specifying FRED scores of 33 as that average quality cutoff. Green are the input files. And then purple are the output files. And we have to actually tell, you know, tell Trimomatic what to call them. So you don't have to call them output forward paired. You could call them whatever you wanted. But be sure that you write down what that is or you'll be really confused. And also be sure that you write your output files. Um, in the correct sequence. So like forward paired, forward unpaired, reverse paired, and reverse unpaired so that names go with the content. You should also be careful that you input your forward and then your reverse data in the input line. Don't like don't flip these around. That's important. Okay. All of this content are options for the command that we are specifying. And I'll just point out here that we're telling it what adapter file to use, and that's a file that's maintained on RON that Trimomatic can call. If the program failed to run, one reason might be that it couldn't find the specified um, adapter file information. This leading, trailing, sliding window and min length thing 
has to do with the settings for how the two different modes work in Trimomatic. So there are other programs besides Trimomatics. It came out in, or Trimomatic, it came out in 2014. It's, it's pretty popular. It's not necessarily the best. There's one called Trim Galore. There's FastX Toolkit. There's Cut Adapt. Um, and there are many other options, as I said before. So that's just a little bit on um, the program Trimomatic, and that concludes this video lecture.